on Sunday, just three days ago, I talked about this idea that in every story there is my story, our story, and God's story. It takes only three days to get a really good example of the right way and the wrong way to respond to that when it happens to you. In the story of Jonah, we get a good example and a bad example. Now, ironically, it's Jonah, the prophet, who is the bad example. He's discovered that somehow his story, his mission in his life, has intersected with God's story. And he has responded to it in a way that seems to work for him, but it doesn't turn out particularly well. We don't get the whole story, obviously, in what we hear this morning, but Jonah has been told to go and proclaim this, the, the, the sins to the people of Nineveh. And he does that. He, he's really into it. And he, he really gets the whole justice thing. The trouble is he hasn't recognized that when his life intersects with God's, the message of justice now also becomes a message about mercy. He does judgment really, really well. He expects that God is going to destroy the place. But God says, no, nah, that's, not, that's not the point here. The point was actually that they would repent and turn because God wants them to be in a loving relationship with God. And that's what they do. Jonah, of course, is put out by this and goes off and pouts, and God has to come by and say, uh, did you miss the point? Did you not get the memo? That wasn't what this was about in the first place takes an awful long time and some pretty sticky adventures before Jonah finally figures out what it is God has been doing, which is trying to draw humanity back, including Jonah, ironically enough, he being, it seems, the hardest nut to crack for God, at least in his own story. Now we get a good example in the people of Nineveh. They've been going along doing their own thing, which apparently turns out to have been sinful, and suddenly they discover that their story has intersected with God's story. Suddenly they realize that God has noticed them. I preach about that a lot because there are a lot of us who would prefer that God never did notice us. And it's those odd little occasions when it becomes apparent to us that no, God really did notice that we're called upon to respond in some way. And in this case, the people of Nineveh get it right. They recognize that God's story is the more important one in this case. What they have been doing has not aligned them with it, and they change. That, dear friends, is the position that all of us find ourselves in again and again through our lives when we discover that our story has intersected with God's story. Probably not in so dramatic a way as to have some strange man walking through our neighborhood shouting about our notorious sins. But nonetheless, we recognize that in some way, a little piece of what God intends for the world has become apparent to us. And we can decide how we're going to respond, whether we're going to respond by saying, no, that's not what it's supposed to be. That, that, that was not my plan. You need to change your plan. Not usually a good prayer, just as a bit of practical advice to you. Or we can say, okay, Suddenly, I have discovered something about the nature of what God desires for the universe. How can I fail? How can I refuse to become part of that? Lent is only beginning, dear friends. Let us hope that when those messages come to us in the next six weeks, we will know whose pattern to follow, whose example is the right one for us. Amen.